I've always viewed it as like, what is the most effective way that I can test so that I can find a winner every time? And you know, if you guys have found winning campaigns before, it's pretty much just a systematic process. And I've basically distilled it down into this. And this is what I use every single time to basically start on a brand new offer, a brand new niche, and uh, go through simple step of processes to find a winner. First, I'm gonna be going over the campaign structure and the key performance indicators. So the campaign structure is a 1-1-3, and so that means one campaign, one ad group, three ads. Um, and so that's basically the way I structure it in my YouTube, like actual Google ad account, right? So one campaign, one ad group, and three different ads. And the KPIs that you're gonna wanna be looking at are the cost per click, which is the most important. So the goal is around $1.25 or lower. Um, typically all my winners are like under a dollar, but around $1.25 you can have great performance. Um, and the video ad click-through rate, the goal is to have it over 2%. And then again, the view rate, it's, you know, ideally have it over 20%, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is the ROI, and that's also then dictated by the cost per click, right? So cost per click is always the most important. So I'm gonna be going over now the, o like the overview of the evolution method. So it's basically got four phases, right? So phase one is testing different videos and scripts. Phase two is taking that winner, or like taking the winner video and script and uh, testing different hooks. Then phase three is taking the winner of this phase two. Sorry, phase three is taking the winner of phase two and then testing different opening scenes. And then phase four is basically taking the winner of that and scaling it. So I'm gonna give you like some visual examples of how I actually lay this out because I basically write out what I'm gonna do on like a piece of paper or like a Word document or something so that I can actually see how I'm going about and what I'm gonna test and what I'm gonna scale. So the first one is to test completely different videos and since they're different scripts and videos, you know, they, they're gonna be completely different, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that these videos and scripts are very different. That ensures that we're gonna have like an actual good test because if you test videos that are just slightly tweaked, you're not gonna have, you know, a good test. And so like a visual example of that is if you test three videos that are basically the same and you just change like a couple words or a couple scenes, it's not gonna be as effective as testing three completely different things. And since this first phase is the first phase, we wanna make sure we get a massive test to begin with so we can test completely different videos. So that way foundationally we can find what's gonna be performing the best like from the ground up. Because if you test three things that are very similar to begin with, the next ones that you're gonna test are gonna have like, you know, it's just not gonna be performing as well as it could. So the next phase is testing different opening hooks, right? And so this is the first 10 to 15 seconds of your video script. So in the first example, let's say we tested three different videos, we can see that video one performed the best. So we move this to phase two, and you can see we're testing um, hook two, three, and four on the number one performing video, which was video one, right? So our goal for this stage is again, take the previous winner and test different hooks, and then again, Right, the stats don't also have to be perfect. So you might not be making sales straight away, but you wanna be making sure that you're looking at the, the KPIs. So even though you might be testing these and not be making sales, you can still find ones that are performing the best. And so then again, you know, how do we find which ad performed the best? So again, you wanna look at the KPIs, but the, also the great thing about this is because we're testing in groups of three, you can already comparatively compare which ones are gonna be performing the best. So if you launch three, two of them might have like a $3 CPC or like a $2 CPC, and one of them might have like a $1.50 CPC. So that's gonna be the one that you wanna work with and move to the next stage. And so then we have the third phase. So the third phase is the opening scene, right? And this is the imagery of the video, and this is where I discussed uh, early on in the presentation where I gave you guys some examples. So testing this is actually massive because I've had videos where I've had the exact same video, the exact same hook, um, and it's maybe negative or breaking even, and I throw it into phase three, and I'm like immediately getting 100, 150% ROI. Because that, it just shows that if you don't visually capture the attention of the audience, they're not gonna watch the whole video. So you could have a video that's performing, or you, you could have a video that's a winner, but again, if you're not capturing their attention at the beginning, no one's gonna watch it and it's not gonna perform. So. Again, since um, the original video is opening scene one, we start it as opening scene two, three, and four. Um, and then again, we monitor the ads data and we see which one's gonna be performing the best. So then what we wanna do is, so now let's say that you you've, you're going through and you're testing the hooks and then testing the opening scenes. 
um, and you haven't found a winner yet. So what you can do now is since you've basically evolved your ad to have like the best video, the best hook, the best opening scene, what you can do now is take the best hook and the best opening scene and use those and test different scripts now. Because now you've basically optimized the very front end of your video to be the best performing. So you can put it into the, you can put it now, the hook and the opening scene onto different scripts. And now each one of those scripts you test is gonna basically perform way better because you've optimized the beginning of the video. Um, and again, for this example, let's say hook four, opening scene four performed the best in all the previous tests. You throw that on top of the next videos such as video four, five, and six. And yeah, so basically the reason why I call it the evolution method is because every stage you're going through, it's just getting better and better and better. And so if you just keep recycling this method, um, you know, you're pretty much going to find a winner. And so I typically find a winner, you know, after, like sometimes in stage three or some, sometimes in stage four. But the whole process is basically now, like I just have a fundamental framework that I can just throw anything in and I just keep going through the stages without any confusion and I find a winner pretty much every single time. Um, and so now let's say, for example, um, we've tested this and now video five, hook four, and opening scene four is performing the best. What we do is just repeat the phases, right? So we take video five and now we test hook fi five, six, and seven. And then we find what hook's performing the best and we do the same thing. So now we have video five with hook six and testing opening scene five, six, and seven. And then you know, once you've done this, you can then find the winner, which let's say is this one, and this is the video you scale up. So by doing this process, you can pretty much just repeat it every single time, and you're basically putting it through a conveyor belt that's, you know, inevitably if you just keep following this, every single ad you launch, every single ad you evolve is just gonna keep getting better and better until you find a winner.